up guys Melanie here from Mount GT back again with another video just want to start this off by saying I hope you guys are doing okay and staying safe staying inside during this time uh, during the coronavirus pandemic but um, today I do have a new video for you guys so as some of you may know but most of you probably don't uh, for the past month or so I've been using this iPhone 7 plus um, my essential phone uh, dropped on the ground and the touchscreen was damaged and then the LCD itself just stopped working so I didn't have a working phone and one of my friends was kind enough to let me borrow their phone so I'm going to uh, in this video I'm going to be talking about my experience with the iPhone coming from you know an Android user someone who's been using Android devices their entire life I'm gonna talk about the things that I liked uh, the things that I didn't like and ultimately why I'm going to be switching back to Android so without any further ado, let's get started. Alrighty guys, so let's go ahead and jump right into this video. So to start off, I just want to give you a couple more details about the phone I've been using so you can, you know, kind of compare that to your own experiences or, you know, just to kind of, you know, give you guys some clarification and a quick disclaimer. So I've been using this iPhone 7 Plus, as you can see, it was rose gold, uh, 64 gigs of storage, and at the time of recording, iOS 13.3.1. Um, and it is currently downloading the 13.4 um, update as we speak, which brings some new improvements to uh, CarPlay, some Memoji stuff, uh, things like that, just some general system improvements. Um, 64 gigs, I'm not sure if I mentioned that already, but uh, that's that's basically what I've been working with. <clears throat> so we're just going to sit here, you know, and talk about um, my experience. Um, we're really going to focus on the three things that I really liked about my experience. Then I'm going to talk about uh, some of my issues, and then as I mentioned, I'm going to explain why, um, while this has opened my eyes, I'm definitely going back to an Android device. So to start off is the Taptic Engine. This is Apple's um, custom vibration motor that they've been using in the iPhone since I believe the iPhone 6S. Um, obviously it's in the 7 and all the newer iPhones from there. Uh, they use it in the MacBook touchpads, and they use it on the Apple Watch. Um, so pretty much all their devices use this new um, custom vibration motor. And so instead of the traditional coin style uh, vibration motor, it's kind of like bar shaped uh, in a way. And so instead of giving you like the traditional vibration feel of most vibration motors, it, as the name suggests, kind of gives you taps, um, allowing for more precise vibration and um, it's used for a lot of things within iOS. It's used within games, within the UI. Um, probably my favorite implementation of it is when you're scrolling through lists and you feel like little taps or when you're switching through modes in the camera app, you get little taps uh, here and there, just kind of re, uh, like reassuring you that you know this is, you know, this is what you're doing. Um, it's also nice because it's harder to miss notifications when my phone's in my pocket. Um, a lot of the times with my essential phone, which has a more traditional vibration motor, it'll be in my pocket vibrating because I'm getting a text message or I'm getting a phone call, and I'll hear it more than I feel it, but then sometimes I won't even hear it, and I'll miss that important text or that um, important call that I was waiting for. So it's kind of nice to have a more robust vibration motor, and while this may not be a big deal to a lot of people, you know, it's just a vibration motor, why does it matter? Um, it's kind of like the, the little things that um, kind of tie the whole experience together. My next thing on the list, my next favorite thing about my experience with the iPhone is probably these speakers. Um, now again, this might not be a big deal to a lot of people because most people, I mean a lot of people have AirPods now, other wireless earphones. Most people don't even really use the speakers on their phone in general. They're using Bluetooth speakers, speakers in their car, or like I said, um, earphones that they have connected or plugged into their phones. But it's kind of nice sometimes when I'm just alone, I'm by myself, no one's around. I kind of want to, you know, play stuff out loud, watch YouTube videos, listen to music while I'm just chilling. And the speakers on this, uh, on the iPhone, are actually really, really good. They sound nice and clear. They're very loud. Um, I mean, for a phone speaker, they have decent bass, but I don't really expect any phone speaker to have um, that much bass. Um, now, Apple introduced their stereo speaker system with, I believe, the iPhone 7, so this is their first generation uh, stereo speaker system, and so basically it uses one speaker at the bottom and another speaker at the top in the earpiece to create a stereo speaker effect without having two speakers on the front of the phone. 
<clears throat> other Android devices and other phone manufacturers have been using um, this speaker system for a while now, um, along with Apple. And um, the implementation here on the 7 Plus is one of the best that I've seen. Like I said, it's nice and loud, very clear, very easy to, you know, distinguish different parts of the sound. Um, and again, it's another little thing that kind of ties the whole uh, experience of the phone together very, very nicely. Last but not least is the fruits of Apple's garden. What do I mean by that? Well, Apple is famous for their ecosystem, the way all of their products, the iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Mac, Apple TV, anything, Apple, you name it, it all works seamlessly together. You have AirDrop, iMessage, FaceTime, uh, continuity, all these great Apple services um, that Apple provides that you can only have access to if you have an Apple device. You can only use AirDrop if you have an iPhone or a Mac or an iPad. Um, you can only use, you can only fully take advantage of AirPods if you have an Apple device. Um, all these, you know, different things that um, Apple kind of integrates into their devices, which again is like another little thing that ties the experience together and makes um, your experience with Apple's devices feel a lot more complete and connected. And then also your phone works well with your friend's phone. So um, you can FaceTime your friend, you can send them an iMessage, play iMessage games, airdrop them stuff, and everything just works seamlessly. Now in my time with the iPhone, I didn't really um, play iMessage games that much. So I mean, while that's a big benefit for a lot of people who own iPhones, especially people of my age, you know, teenagers. <clears throat> I didn't really use iMessage games that much um, during my time with the iPhone. I did use iMessage and FaceTime a lot. Um, and I gotta say, they are definitely probably the main selling point of the iPhone, iMessage and FaceTime. They just work so well. Um, I never really had any issues with the two of them. And even deregistering my phone number when I was switching back to Android. Um, to get my phone number disassociated with iMessage and FaceTime was a lot less painless than I had initially anticipated it to be. But um, yeah, so the fruits of Apple's garden, iMessage and FaceTime, I used them a lot, I enjoyed using them, and they're definitely a lot better than, you know, traditional SMS texting and having to download all these different apps just to, you know, video call a friend. It's built into the phone and it just works. And that's, you know, that's kind of the main selling point, other than, you know, iMessage and FaceTime, the main selling point behind the iPhone, it just works. Everything just works across, you know, everyone's devices, your friends, your own, your uh, your family, everything just works. Um, and it's kind of nice to, you know, have like that connected ecosystem. But that's, that's pretty much all the things that I really, really liked about my experience with the iPhone. That's not to say that I didn't like other things, but those were my favorites. And uh, if I'm being honest, my experience with the iPhone wasn't all, you know, flowers and uh, good smelling things. So believe it or not, I actually did have problems with my, uh, during my experience with the iPhone. Um, there were times where I would swipe down to check my notifications and I just couldn't, it just wouldn't come down. Um, my notifications would get stuck at the top of the screen. Um, I couldn't open Control Center, like it just would not open. Um, apps would crash frequently, especially games. Um, FaceTime would crash, iMessage would crash, um, my iMessages weren't sending sometimes. <clears throat> All these like really, really annoying things and they kind of just added up. And it wasn't just like, you know, close the app and then reopen it and it'll be working fine again. Or, you know, just leave the phone alone, let it chill, let it catch up and you'll be good to go. For every single one of these issues, which happened more than once, I would have to restart the phone every single time. And this was after, you know, a full factory reset um, coming from my friend. And I was honestly a little bit disappointed. Um, I kind of expected more from, you know, this experience that you pay so much for, this experience that is held so high among other smartphones. Uh, that's not to say that I've never had, you know, bugs or issues with my other phones, um, but I had an unusual amount of issues with the iPhone, you know, more than I expected. Um, I really thought that Apple had worked through the stability issues that, you know, have plagued iOS in the past, but I guess they still have some work to do. Um, but you know, everyone has some work to do on those issues. And my entire experience wasn't plagued with those issues. Um, after about a week or so, they kind of sorted themselves out. Um, there was like one update, and I think that kind of pretty much fixed most of the problems that I had been having. 
Um, it was it just kind of sucked, you know, see those issues. But um, I worked through it, and my overall experience with the phone was pretty great. But um, those stability issues, uh, combined with the fact that you know there are a lot of features that I missed on Android, you know, after switching back yesterday, at the time of this recording yesterday, um, <clears throat> there were a lot of things that I missed. And while the iPhone was an eye-opening experience, I kind of expected, you know, I kind of expected to go in, use it, and then come out of the experience like, okay, now I'm going to go out and see if I can get an iPhone to be my daily driver, get my own iPhone, and, you know, switch over to iOS for good. I thought that was going to happen, and it didn't. And, you know, I switched back to Android, and there were just a lot of features that I missed, a lot of things that I didn't have on the iPhone um, that I would definitely miss if I switched over to iOS. For example, split-screen multitasking. That was a feature that I used a lot, um, especially during school. I would have like a presentation open on the right side of my phone and a Google Doc um, open on the left side. And so I'd be taking notes while I'm looking through the presentation. Or I'd have two Google Docs side by side, you know, comparing notes and, you know, taking notes, um, using it for school. Notification handling is, <clears throat> excuse me, notification handling is far better in Android um, Apple has made some improvements to that, but it's still much, much better in Android. Um, having to, you know, swipe notifications twice just to, you know, clear a single notification or, you know, having to do two steps to clear all my notifications in iOS was kind of, you know, bothersome. And while it's like a really little thing to complain about, I'm just used to notifications being handled, you know, miles better in Android that, you know, switching to a system like that was uh, pretty frustrating. Um, the rotation system in Android is also, you know, handled a lot better. If I'm like laying down in my bed, the phone doesn't auto rotate, but if I do want it to rotate, I just rotate the phone and I tap the little button in the corner that rotates my screen, rotate it back, tap the button and we're good to go. So it's just all these little things, all these little features in Android that I use all the time mixed with the customizability, uh, the customization, the different things that I can add to my experience or take away from my experience if I want. Just all the different options and features, plus the issues that I had on the iPhone, um, kind of convinced me that, you know, iMessage, FaceTime, the Apple ecosystem, the way everything just works, they're impressive and they're nice things to have, but the core experience of Android just wins me over every single time. And uh, I don't think I will be switching to an iPhone anytime soon. But that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I hope you did enjoy. If you have any questions about my experience on the iPhone, please let me know in the comments down below. You can also hit me up on Twitter or on Instagram. Both of those are linked in the description below. Make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already. Hopefully, I will have some more content for you guys um, during this very long break that we have during this uh, stay at home uh, during the coronavirus and everything. Again, I hope you guys are staying safe. I hope you guys have a great day and peace out.